Good evening, everyone. My name is Akhil. This is my friend Sam. And today we're going to talk about how you can flip coins in order to estimate pseudo counts for exploration. Um, so I'm going to argue that exploration is not only unique to RL, but also something that we're terribly bad at. And the paradigm of exploration that we want to talk about today is that of novelty search, wherein we uh, try to encourage our agents to go out there and experience uh, parts of the state space that it hasn't seen before. And how to do this kind of exploration is pretty well understood when the environment is small and tabular. Uh, and what that involves is you take the rewards that you get from the environment and you augment it with a bonus term. And decades of really beautiful theoretical work tells us exactly what that bonus should look like. And turns out it should be uh, falling off as a function of the square root of 1 over n, where n is the number of times you've tried a state action pair. And if you commit to this paradigm, you'll find uh, learning algorithms that can achieve optimal policies in uh, polynomial time. So this is obviously amazing, and we want to import these kinds of learnings into large continuous MDPs. So we go out there, and now we generalize this idea of counts uh, to that of pseudo counts, which kind of behave like counts, uh, but works in continuous cases because they include some notion of generalization, wherein nearby states or similar states have similar counts. The dominant approach to computing pseudo counts is through density modeling, where if you have a state, you try to learn a uh, probability density function, and you look at how that probability density function changes when you visit that state. And this change in probability density through some really clever math can be turned into a pseudo count estimation. And although this is very elegant, uh, it has some key uh, challenges. And particularly, this relationship between changes in probability density and pseudo counts is very fragile and requires a lot of assumptions on both the training dynamics as well as the architectures that you're allowed to use. Specifically, you have to commit to a training procedure for your density model which is online and can only be updated on a state a single time. So you can't use things like batching. Um, furthermore, you have to commit to, norm, uh, to models that give you normalized probability density estimates. So you can't use your favorite uh, density model, uh, favorite generative models like GANs or VAEs. So our hypothesis is that we can make count-based exploration a more popular paradigm within exploration. Uh, if we can compute these pseudo counts more directly, without having to go through the proxy of density modeling. Uh, so the way that we do this is um, we set up a, a simple regression problem um, that when we solve it, will uh, will produce these one over square root of n bonuses that we're looking for. Uh, and uh, the way we do this is we take advantage of a, a simple but really helpful uh, property of these uh, random, what we call coin flip distributions, these uh, minus one, one vectors, random vectors, uh, which is that uh, of course, if you average many of these together, uh, the mean will tend towards the zero vector. Um, but what's especially helpful is that uh, because of the uh, central limit theorem, uh, the magnitude of this average vector will scale exactly with one over the square root of n. So we're going to try to turn this into a pseudo count bonus. Um, and so let's say we're playing our favorite Atari video game, Montezuma's Revenge, um, and we encounter an observation. Uh, what we do is we assign it one of these random coin flip vectors of ones and minus ones. Uh, we keep on playing, we see the same state again later, and we assign it a new vector of ones and minus ones. Um, and now the task that we, ha that, we, uh, that we set up is we try to train a function approximator to map these observations to their coin flip vector labels. But it can't do this perfectly because we've seen the same observation twice and we've assigned it two different labels. And under mean squared error, actually, the best that it can do is output the average of these two coin flip vectors. Uh, which, as I described before, because of the central limit theorem, the magnitude of this average will exactly scale with one over the square root of n. So we can use this average as uh, the magnitude of this average as a bonus. Uh, so in summary, we've uh, we've set up this uh, simple regression problem between um, between observations and these random coin flip vector labels. Uh, and when we uh, train our function approximator thoroughly, uh, we can use the magnitude of its output as a pseudo count bonus. Uh, and so you can look to the paper uh, to see uh, the math for this, uh, as well as uh, an analysis of this in the linear function approximation case. Um, and so that's how it works in theory. Uh, how does this work in practice? 
Um, so we can answer this question by, uh, by using this uh, pseudo count method to produce bonuses on uh, something like a visual grid roll task, uh, where the agent is presented with visual observations, um, but we as the practitioners have access to the true underlying counts. And what we find is that CFN, or coin flip network, which is our method, uh, when trained on this data, produces extremely accurate uh, bonuses uh, compared to what we want, which is this one over squared event. Uh, in contrast, something like uh, Pixel CNN, which is the state-of-the-art uh, density model-based approach to computing pseudo counts, um, doesn't track uh, as well with uh, this underlying bonus that it's trying to achieve. Um, and in particular, if you look, uh, if you look here, um, it assigns the same amount of novelty to uh, observation to states that it's encountered uh, only a single time, to, uh, compared to states that it's encountered up to 25 times. Uh, and then we can look at R and D, which is not a uh, pseudo count based method, but um, is a novelty prediction method. And we see that it's much much less well correlated with the underlying bonus we're trying to approximate. Uh, when we scale this up to problems we don't have access to the underlying counts on, for example, continuous control problems, we still find that qualitatively these uh, pseudo count based bonuses uh, generalize in the way we would like, which is that uh, they give high bonus to things along the frontier of exploration uh, near the end of the, uh, the U maze and are low near the start where you spawn, where you've seen it many times. Um, so this will push the agent towards the frontier, which is what we want out of exploration. Great, so we can predict accurate counts that kind of make some sense, uh, but does it lead to more sample efficient RL? Because that's what we care about. And we've tried this on a bunch of domains. The short of it uh, is that we do better than existing methods on most of the tasks and kind of like them in some of the tasks. So here we have uh, two examples of continuous control sparse reward tasks where we're outperforming vanilla RL and uh, R&D. And we have some discrete control tasks like Grid World and Montezuma's Revenge we do better than vanilla RL, but about Thai uh, R&D. But here's the interesting thing when you compare on these discrete domains with R&D. Specifically, if you slightly change the task uh, by introducing some noise into the transition dynamics, we find that the R&D's performance degrades a lot more rapidly than that of coin flip network. And the same sort of story tracks for Montezuma's Revenge, where more uh, stochasticity means that R&D's performance uh, sort of degrades faster. And in retrospect, this is not surprising because that's exactly why we have the one over square root of n bonus. It was designed with stochastic MDPs in mind. And so committing to count-based exploration allowed us to uh, scale much more gracefully in stochastic environments. So to conclude, we uh, presented a method to do pseudo count estimation without going through the proxy of density models uh, by noticing a simple fact about coin flip distributions. Uh, which we turned into a simple regression supervised learning problem. Uh, and we showed that we can get accurate counts, which eventually leads to sample efficient or more sample efficient RL. Uh, catch us at our poster. Thanks a lot. <laughs>